Welcome to this mini-series where we'll be exploring fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis more in details. In this session, we'll try to understand the purpose and the use of the qualitative comparative analysis, also called QCA, and also be aware of the advantages and the limitations of using QCA research. Qualitative comparative analysis is an analytic approach and set of research tools that combines detailed within case analysis and formalized cross-case comparisons. This technique was originally developed by Charles Ruggin in 1987 to study data sets that are too small for linear regression analysis, a large for cross-case analysis. In general terms, QCA can be described by its pre principles, which are complex causality as an underlying assumption and the combination of detailed within case analysis with formalized cross case comparisons as the modus operandi. Each principle fits into what kind of research profits from using QCA. The central goal of QCA is an exhaustive explanation of the phenomenon under investigation. An underlying assumption of QCA is that social phenomena involve complex causality. Complex causality means that first, causal factors combine with each other to lead to the occurrence of an event or phenomenon. Second, different combinations of causal factors can lead to the occurrence of a given type of event or phenomenon. And finally, causal factors can have opposing effects depending on the combinations. This focus on the explanation of a given phenomenon or event, as well as the assumption of complex causality underlying social phenomena, bear on the kind of research questions and data QCA is best applied to. First, QCA is strongest and most adequately used when studying social phenomena of complex, complex causality that can be formulated in set theoretic terms, which means asking about necessary and sufficient conditions. For such research questions, QCA sensitivity to causal complexity gives it an analytic edge over many statistical techniques of data analysis. Second, in-depth case knowledge is a prerequisite and integral part of the research process in the understanding of qualitative comparative analysis. Familiarizing oneself with the cases and engaging in intensive within case analysis takes up an important share of the analytic work. So QCA should be understood not as an alternative, but an addition to intensive within case analysis.
QCA is a combination of within case analysis and cross case comparison. QCA combines detailed within case analysis and formalized systematic cross case comparisons. As you can see in the figure on the slide, the research process with QCA is repetitive, usually involving several rounds of within case analysis and cross case comparisons. The first results obtained through formalized QCA induce further case selection and or redefinition of the fuzzy sets that describe the conditions and the outcome. Most importantly, the results will inform further within case analysis and expand the knowledge on, of the case. It is also important to note that the results obtained through formalized QCA analysis do not actually prove causal relations. Rather, they reveal patterns of associations across sets of cases or observations, thereby providing support for the existence of such causal relations. However, an association might reveal an ontological relation, which is, for example, two events or factors are linked because one constitutes what the other is rather than causing it, or a spurious causal link. Like two events or factors are associated because they are both caused by a third unobserved factor. Qualitative comparative analysis offers many benefits for qualitative researchers, like a unique set of tools for tackling research questions that are based on set theoretic notions and for analyzing causal complexity. It's also a boost in analytic potential for cross-case comparisons that is especially useful for medium-sized datasets. It also helps in making, research, in making research more systematic and transparent and insights into causal or and typological patterns that assist the development of mid-range theories. QCA's potential for systematic cross-case comparison is especially helpful for qualitative researchers working with medium-sized datasets, which means about 15 to 50 cases. If researchers are interested in what produces a certain event or phenomenon, or want to know what different variants of a given phenomenon exist, QCA provides the unique possibility to combine classic in-depth qualitative analysis with systematic cross-case comparisons. It identifies patterns as well as cases deviating from these patterns using clear logical operations. Its formal language provides a useful way to convey a study's central fundings to the reader or audience. In short, QCA helps qualitative researchers to handle the considerable amount of data of a medium-sized case study, both during the analytical process and when presenting the fundings. Another advantage is that Q 
QCA increases the transparency of analysis by making explicit a number of choices researchers have to face, for example, regarding their concept formation and the use of counterfactual analysis. There are also a number of limitations and criticisms regarding the use of QCA. Well, for example, in small size studies, QCA cannot be employed because the method requires a minimum number of cases, approximately 10 cases. For certain research interests, the methods focus on complex causality and identifying combinations of conditions might not be helpful. As this is a logical, deterministic and not a statistical, probabilistic technique, with crisp set QCA, the original application of QCA, variables can only have two values, 0 and 1. The technique does not allow an assessment of the effect of the relative strength of the independent variables. A statistical methodologist have also argued that QCA's strong assumptions render its fundings both fragile and prone to type 1 error. There have been also some responses to those criticisms. Some of these are that QCA can be performed probabis probabilistically or deterministically with observations of categorical variables. Also, in real life complex societal processes, QCA enables the identification of multiple sets of conditions that are consistently associated with a particular output in order to explore for causal predictors. Fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis aims to handle variables where the number of categories becomes too large to use other types of qualitative comparative analysis like the multi-value analysis. Or in cases where uncertainty or ambiguity or measurement error in the classifications of the case needs to be acknowledged. Finally, we can see that QCA has become used in many more fields than political science, which Ragin first developed the method for. Today, the method has been used, as you can see, in different fields like project management, human behavior, innovation management, business, environmental science, education, health research, tourism, and so on. Here you also see some references where you can find more if you are interested in the application of this particular type of analysis. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more on qualitative comparative analysis and I look forward to meeting you all very soon. Goodbye.